In Excel, we have text to column option under data menu, which will split text into multiple columns, right? But we don't have option to split text into multiple rows. And also we don't have any Excel function to split text into multiple rows. In this video, I will show you two different solution to split text into multiple rows. In the first approach, I will show you a Power Query solution, which is very easy to use. And in just a couple of steps, we can easily do it. And in the second approach, I will show you an Excel function solution to split text into multiple rows, which is a bit complex, but Office 365 dynamic arrays functionality makes this very easy. And I will promise you this Excel function solution will be a never seen before. So stay with me on this video and I will show you two awesome solutions to split text into multiple rows. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified with my upcoming videos. Let's see the data set. I have sales data here which has purchase ID purchase date, customer details and product details. And using this data set, we have to get the date wise total product count and total product amount. And if you see these product details here, multiple products are combined in one cell using the pipe symbol. And each product code and the respective product amount is combined with underscore symbol. And to get this report, we have to split these details, right? And to do this, I will show you two solutions. In the first solution, we'll use Power Query. So let's convert this data set into an official table. Select the data, use keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus T and enable this option and click OK. So before we load this data to Power Query, let's understand the logical steps which we are going to do in Power Query. Steps are very simple and it will have just a couple of steps. Here we have product details combined in one cell, right? And first we have to split each product using pipe symbol in multiple rows. Once we split it product in rows, then we can split the product amount in column. So once we split this each product in multiple rows, then we will have each product in individual rows like this we will have each product in multiple rows this is my first product this is my second product and this is my third product so likewise we will have product in multiple rows and once we have this product splitted in multiple rows then we can split this product amount in columns by this what will happen we will have a two separate column one for product code and one for product amount which will make very easy to prepare this report, right? So let's see this in action. Put the cursor in table and load this data to Power Query. Click on data menu and select from table range. It will load data to Power Query. Let's give it a name to this data set as TBL sales data. You can give any name here. And from applied steps, delete this change type step we'll do change type in the last in the first what we have to do we have to split this each product in multiple rows right so let's select this product details column here click on transform menu click on split column and select by limiter as we have to split based on pipe symbol let's select by delimiter from this drop down select custom and here in text box enter the pipe symbol by default this option will split text in multiple columns we have to change the option to split in multiple rows expand this advance option here and select rows to split text into multiple rows and click ok here you can see each products are splitted in multiple rows and following columns data also filled on automatically. This is the beauty of Power Query. 
now we have product code in independent rows right so next what we can do we can split this product amount in columns right so let's select this column again click on transform menu click on split column and select again by delimiter as we have to split based on underscore symbol here in text box enter the underscore symbol so by default this option will split in columns you can confirm by expanding this advanced option here you can see columns is already selected now click on ok it will split amount in new column so we have product code in one column and the product amount in another column right so this is what we are looking for right so let's give it a name to this header so double click on this and give it as p code which is a product code and give it a name for this column also give it a name as p amount which is a product amount right if you see in the applied steps there are two times change type step is applied so let's delete this change type step select this and click on this delete icon and select delete and here also change type applied step is added let's delete this one also select delete so now we have all the steps here so this is our source data once the source data is loaded we have splitted the product details in rows next we have splitted the product details in columns now we have product code and last we have renamed these two column headers right now let's change the data type for each of this column and there is the easiest way to change the data type for each column is just select the data click on transform menu and select detect data type so it will automatically detect the data type for each of this column and it will set it automatically right if you see this purchase state column is still showing as a date and time format right so let's click on this data type icon and the purchase date column and select date which will convert in date format and select here replace current right so now we have pure the structured data right now it's very easy to get the report based on date wise total product content total product amount right so let's load this data back to excel as a pivot report click on home click on close and load and select close and load to select pivot table report and select new sheet and click ok so it will create a pivot report so what is the report we are looking for so we are looking for purchase date wise let's drag this purchase date in row label and drag this purchase code in the value section and drag this purchase amount to value section again so right so we are taking a count of product code and we are taking a sum of product amount right so now we have successfully prepared the report date wise total product code and total product amount right this is very easy to do it using power query now let's see the second solution which is excel function here we will not use any VBA code. So before we start writing an excel function let's understand the logic in multiple steps and in last we'll write function in one cell. Let's copy one of the product details to new sheet. Here we have a product details right. So what we need from this cell we need two information right. So one is the total product count we need and the total product amount right so we need these two information let's see how we can get the total product count from this cell so first what we have to do first we have to get the total length of this original text right first we have to get the total length of original text next what we have to do is we have to identify the pattern here if you see the pattern here each product code in the respect to product amount is combined with underscore symbol right so here is my first product code which is combined with underscore symbol and we have a same pattern here for second product code also this is my second product code we have underscore symbol then we have a second product amount right so likewise we have a third product code the third underscore and the third product amount right so we have a three 
underscore symbol it means we have a total three products so what we have to do here is we have to get the count of this underscore symbol how we will get the count of this underscore symbol and to get this count of underscore symbol we have to remove the underscore symbol from this text right so this is our second step create new text by removing underscore symbol right this is our second step and once we get the new text by removing underscore symbol then we will take the length of new text then next what we can do now we have a total length and we have a new text length last what we have to do is we have to do original text length minus new text length right so first we have to get the total length then we have to remove the underscore symbol next we have to take the length of this new text at last we have to subtract this original text length minus new text length so these are the steps we have to follow to get the count of any specific text from this cell so let's do these steps one by one here so first we'll get the original length equal to len bracket open it has only one parameter which is text so let's select this text which is a2 and close the bracket press enter so we have total 40 characters in this cell right next we have to create a new text by removing underscore symbol right so which function we can use here to remove underscore we can use substitute function right so substitute function is like a replace function so what is my first parameter to substitute function it is a text right so here is my text which is a2 let's select a2 here put it comma here the second parameter is old text so which text we want to replace underscore right so let's enter underscore in double quotes put it comma here third parameter is new text so i want to replace this underscore with blank right so enter double quotes two times next close the bracket press enter now we have a new text without the underscore symbol next we have to get the length of new text let's use the length function again equal to length bracket open now this time we will select this new text as we need this length of new text close the bracket and press enter so now we have a length of this new text at last we have to get the difference equal to original length minus this new text length so how many times underscore symbol we have in this cell total three times right it means we have total three products in this cell so we have to follow this logic to get the count of any character from a cell right now we have these number of product count now let's see how we can get the total product amount from this cell and to get this you have to understand the pattern here first so let's understand the pattern here so where is our amount is placed right so here is my first amount so where it's placed what is the common logic here to get the amount from this cell if you see the pattern here our amount is placed between underscore symbol and the pipe symbol right so our amount is placed between these two symbols so here is my underscore symbol and here is my pipe symbol and my amount is placed between these two special characters and the same pattern we have for the second instance of amount also here we have underscore and here we have a pipe symbol and my and our amount is placed between these two special characters and we have a same pattern for the third instance of this amount also we have a underscore but we don't have the pipe symbol here in last so what we will do we will add a pipe symbol here manually to make the same pattern here right we have a underscore next we have this pipe symbol and our, our, and our amount is placed between these two special characters 
right so now we identify the pattern but how we can loop through each instance of this underscore symbol how we will loop through right so we have to loop through each instance of this underscore right first we have to get this underscore next we have to get this second one next we have to get this third one right so we have something to loop through this each instance of this underscore right so first what we have to do we have to get the loop number how many times we have to loop right that we already identified here this number of product count right so we have to loop three times so next what we have to do next we have to replace this each instance of this underscore with some other special character you can use any special character but you have to make sure to use only that special character which is not exist in the cell value right so in our case we'll use the greater than symbol we have to replace this each instance of this underscore with greater than symbol right so this is our second step here create new text by replacing each instance of underscore symbol with greater than symbol right so this is our second step and once we have this new text created then next we have to identify the position of each instance of greater than symbol right if i replace this underscore with greater than symbol then we have to identify this position of this greater than symbol right so this is our third step get the position of greater than symbol which will be our starting position and once we get this starting position next we have to identify the position of this pipe symbol right so why pipe symbol because our amount is placed between this underscore and this pipe symbol right so we have to identify this position of this pipe symbol so which position of pipe symbol we have to identify whatever pipe symbol we have after this underscore symbol and this underscore symbol we are replacing with greater than symbol and next we are identifying the position of this greater than symbol then whatever pipe symbol we have after this greater than symbol that position of pipe symbol we have to identify that will be our in position so next we have to get the position of pipe symbol that will be our in position right once we have this position of this pipe symbol next we have to identify the number of characters how many characters we have between these two special characters right to get this amount because we don't know how many characters we have for the amount sometimes we might get six characters we might get four or five character also right so we have to get the number of character count between these two symbols this is our next step here get the number of characters between above two symbols right and once we have the number of character then we can apply the logic to get the get the amount for each instances right when once we have the amount for each instances then we can sum it right so these are all steps we have to follow to get the amount from this cell right so let's do these steps one by one here so first what we have to get first we have to get the loop number right how we will get the loop number here in office 365 we have a sequence function right we can use sequence function here sequence function will be act as a looping system for us let's use the sequence here equal to sequence bracket open the first parameter is rows so how many rows we want to fill here so how many product we have that number of times we have to fill right that number of rows we have to fill and that number of product we already identified here let's select this which is a11 put it comma here the second parameter is column so i want result in one column so let's enter one here put it comma here the third parameter is a start 
so I want to start from 1 so let's enter 1 put it comma here the last parameter is a step so I want to increment by 1 close the bracket and press enter you can see we got this serial number right so this will be act as a looping system for us right so this is our loop system next what we have to do we have to create the new text right by replacing each instance of this underscore symbol now this looping number will act as a instances so first instance will replace the first instance of underscore then it will replace the second instance of underscore next it will replace the third instance of the underscore right so let's get the new text here here we can use substitute function as the substitute function has the advantage to replace some specific instance of this text right what is the first parameter text so this is my text which is a2 let's select this put it comma here the old text is underscore right so we want to replace this underscore let's enter underscore in double quotes put it comma here and the new text is greater than symbol right as we want to replace this underscore with greater than symbol so let's enter greater than symbol in double quotes put it comma here so the last parameter is instance number so here we have to define which instance of underscore you want to replace and that number we already identified here right using a sequence function so let's select this which is a14 and enter hash symbol here to select the entire range now close the bracket press enter you can see the difference here so the for the first cell so it replaced the first instance of the underscore and for the second it replaced the second instance of this underscore and the last it replaced the third instance of the underscore with greater than symbol right now this now it's very easy to get the amount right so next what we have to do we have to identify the position of this greater than symbol right so now let's get the now this one will call the starting position so here we can use search function right equal to search bracket open the first parameter is find text so what we want to find we want to find this greater than symbol let's enter in double quotes put it comma here so within text where you want to search this text we want to search in this new text right so let's let's select this which is b14 and enter a hash symbol here to select the entire range put it comma here the last parameter is a start number so from which position you want to start search this greater than symbol so i want to start from first character so let's enter one here close the bracket and press enter you can see we got the position of the greater than symbol for each instance right for the first instance greater than symbol is placed at seventh position and the second instance of greater than symbol is 21 and the third instance of greater than symbol is 35 now this is the position of greater than symbol if you see the product detail here my amount starts after this greater than symbol right now the position which we identified this position is for greater than symbol so what we can do here so we can add a plus one here to get the position after this greater than symbol as our amount starts after this greater than symbol so that's why we are adding plus one here right so our text starts from 8 and for the second instance amount starts from 22 and the third instance of amount is starts from 36 position right so next what we have to do we have to get the position of the pipe symbol right so which will be our in position so here we can use search function again equal to search bracket open so the first parameter is find text so we want to find pipe symbol let's enter pipe symbol in double quotes put it comma here so where we want to search this we want to search in this new text right select this b14 enter has symbol to select the entire range put it comma here and the last parameter is a start number so here you have to decide from which position you want to start searching this pipe symbol and which position of pipe symbol we are looking for so we are looking for pipe symbol after this greater than symbol right so this is for first instance and this is for second instance and this is for the third instance right 
and that position of this greater than symbol we already identified here right so let's select this so starting from eighth position start searching this pipe symbol right so let's select c14 and put it hash here and close the bracket press enter so now we get the error here why we are getting error here as we forgot to mention pipe symbol for the last instance of this product so let's add a pipe symbol here right and press enter now we will have a end position for all three instances here so the first instance of pipe symbol is placed at 14 and the second instance of pipe is at 28 position and, and the third instance of pipe symbol is at 41 position right so next what we have to do next we have to identify the number of characters between these two special characters so let's get the number of characters here so how we can get the number of character by subtracting this in position minus the start position right so how many characters we have for first instance of amount we have total six character right so what we can do we can add a hash here right so we have just entered d14 minus c14 so what we will do instead of this we'll select this d14 and enter hash symbol here minus select this start position which is c14 and enter hash symbol here also to select the entire range and press enter now we will have a number of characters for each instance of this amount right for first instance we have six character and for second instance amount we have six character and for the third instance of amount we have a five characters right now we have to get the amount for each instances here we can use mid function right equal to mid bracket open and the first parameter is text so from which text you want to extract the amount so i want to extract from this text right let's select this and enter hash symbol here to select the entire range put it comma here and the start number the second parameter is a start number so from which position you want to start in that position we already identified here right as our amount starts from after this greater than symbol right and that position we already identified here let's select this which is c14 enter hash symbol again to select entire range put it comma here and the last parameter is number of characters so from that starting position how many characters you want to extract and that number of characters we already identified here let's select this e14 and enter hash symbol here to select the entire range close the bracket and press enter right this is awesome right now we have splitted this each instance of amount into multiple rows thanks to office 365 dynamic arrays functionality here which makes very easy to do this if you see here each instance of amount is showing as a text format right now we have to convert this text amount into the number format here we can use value function let's wrap the value function here equal to value bracket open and close the bracket press enter now you can see now amounts are in number format and last what we can do we can sum this right to get the total amount equal to sum bracket open let's select this amount which is f14 and enter hash symbol here to select the entire range and close the bracket and press enter now we got the total amount we successfully get the total amount from the cell right so these are the steps you have to follow to get the amount from this text next what we have to do next we have to combine this individual steps into one cell and here we can use let function right equal to equal to let let so we can use this let function so what is the use of let function so let function allows us to create variable right so it will allow us to create variable store value in variable and access variable anywhere in under this let function so let function allows us to create variable store the value in variable and access the variable anytime under this let function right 
If you want to learn more about let function, then you can navigate to this URL. You can find this link in the description below. It has very good documentation about let, let function. So you can make a utilize of this documentation. And this is more powerful and more improved performance function here in Office 365, right? So let's use the let function here to get the total amount and all these individual steps will do in one cell by using let function, right? Equal to let let bracket open. Now what is the first parameter here? Name one. Name one means you have to enter the variable name here, right? So first what we have to do? First we have to get this original text. So instead of selecting this A2 cell, again and again what we will do we will store this a2 cell value in one variable so let's enter the variable name here o text means original text and to create a variable name you have to enter the name you should not use any double quotes here right so just a plain text value you have to enter to create variable put it comma here then the next parameter is name value one. So what is the value you want to store in this variable? So I want to store this value, which is A2. Let's select A2 here. So whatever value we have in A2 cell, that value will store in this variable, which is O text, original text, right? Put it comma here. And the third parameter is calculation or a name to. If you don't want to create any more variable, then you can use this first variable here in this calculation step but we have a more steps right so let's create a new variable one more variable here and the next what we have to do next we have to get the loop number right how many times we have to loop so that we already identified here right which is a11 so let's store this instance number so i'm using a variable name as inum which is an instance number put it comma here now what is the value you want to store in this variable so i want to store this value which is a11 let's select a11 so this number of times we have to loop right that we already identified here put it comma here and again same pattern will follow here variable name the variable value and the calculation right this is the pattern will follow in let function now let's create a third variable here next what we have to do next we have to get this loop number right so let's create a variable here loop number put it comma here what is the value you want to store in this variable i want to store this value right so let's use the sequence function here instead of selecting this we'll write a sequence function directly in this let function sequence bracket open and how many rows you want to fill and that we already identified here right which is a11 and that a11 value we have stored in this inum variable so let's use the inum here put it comma here so we want result in one column so let's enter one put it comma start from one put it comma and increment by one right close the bracket for sequence so whatever value will get from sequence function that value will be stored in this loop number variable right put it comma here let's create a fourth variable here so we got the loop number next we have to get this new text right so let's enter the variable name as new text put it comma here so what we want to store in this variable so this new text value we have to store right so let's use the substitute function here bracket open and what is my text and that text we already identified here right which is our original text instead of selecting a2 what we will do we'll use this variable which is o text let's use this o text here put it comma what is my old text we want to replace the underscore right so let's enter underscore put it comma we want to replace this underscore with greater than symbol let's enter here put it comma now which instance of underscore we want to replace and that instance number we already identified here right which is a loop number so we will have a loop number here one two and three so let's enter the loop number here 
close the bracket for substitute now put it comma here now we have a new text next what we have to do we have to get this start position right so let's enter the variable name here as start number put it comma so what is the value you want to store in this variable the whatever start position we have right so let's use the search function here bracket open so what we want to find we want to find the greater than symbol right put it here put it comma here so where we want to search in this new text right as we are replacing this underscore with greater than symbol and that value we are storing in this new text variable right so within text let's use this new text variable put it comma here so start from one right close the bracket and put it comma here so now we have the start position next we have to get the end position here so let's enter the variable name as e number put it comma here so what value we want to store here so the in positions right so let's use the search function again here so what we want to find this time we want to find the pipe symbol right put it comma here so where we want to search in new text right so enter the new text variable here put it comma now here from from which position you want to start searching this pipe symbol from this start number right each instance of underscore we are replacing with greater than symbol and whatever pipe symbol we have after this greater than symbol that position of pipe symbol we want to identify so that start position we already identify here which is a s number so let's enter the s number variable here close the bracket for search here now we have a in position put it comma here now let's create the number of characters next what we have to do we have to get the number of characters right so let's use the variable as number of character put it comma here so what is the value we want to store in this variable the number of characters so what is the logic to get the number of character e number which we already identified here right using this search function minus the start number which we already identified here s number right now we will have a number of characters and that value will be stored in this variable put it comma here next we have to get this amount right so let's use the amount as variable name put it comma here what is the value we want to store in this variable the mid function right here we are using mid function to get the amount for each instances right so let's use the value function and use the mid function here what is my text so we want to extract amount from this new text right you can go with the original text also either you can go with the new text also that doesn't matter here so let's use the new text here put it comma here the second parameter is a start number and we want to start from this greater than symbol right and that greater than symbol position we already identified here and that we are storing in s number variable so let's enter the s number variable here put it comma here and the last parameter is number of characters and this number of characters we already identified here and that value we are storing in this variable right number of character so let's enter the variable which is number of character right close the bracket for mid close the bracket for value put it comma here and last what we have to do we have to sum this individual amount right so let's use the variable here total amount t amount total amount put it comma here so what is the value we want to store in this variable we want to store the sum of bracket open and whatever value comes from this mid function that value will be stored in this amt variable right so let's use this amt here close the bracket for sum now we have created variable for each of these steps which we have done here right we have created a loop number we have created a new text start position in position the number of characters the each instance of amount and next and last the total amount right and for each steps we have created a variable and we have stored the each steps of output in that variable put it comma here 
now the calculation right here i can create more variable if i have but we don't have right so we are done with the all the variables we are done with the all these steps here right now it's time to use the last variable name right so the sum of amount this value we are storing in this variable which is t amount let's use the t amount here now close the bracket and press enter here we are getting error right so why we are getting error here let's see what we have done here i think we have done something wrong in this function let's identify the each of these steps so first we are getting this original text next we are getting the e number next we are getting the loop numbers next we are creating a new text next we are creating a start number here and if you see the start number here we are searching for greater than symbol in this new text and here we are restoring the position of greater than symbol but our amount starts after this greater than symbol right so we forgot to add plus one here for this for search function so let's add plus one here right so we added plus one for this start position next we are identifying the e number which is correct next we are identifying the number of characters then we are getting the amount and at last we are summing this amount here and, and correct so let's press enter here now we will have the total amount right so this is how you can use the let function so this is the beauty of office 365 dynamic arrays functionality and the let function is very powerful function and it has very good performance also and the let function it's very easy to debug and it's very easy to right also each of your steps you can store your each steps of value in variable and you can access that variable right so this is the beauty of let function here so now we have the total amount right now let's test this one so let's add a one more product to the cell value here so pc01 underscore and my amount is 34.56 now add a pipe symbol in the last manually and press enter you can see our individual steps also behaving correctly and our overall function is also working perfectly fine right so this is how you can loop through each of the text in a cell value and also you can split any value in multiple rows using this sequence function so sequence function will act as a loop system for you right so now it's time to add these two formulas to our raw data to get the total product count and the total product amount for each of these customers, right? Let's add a product column here. So product code. So what is the logic to get the product count? So total length, right? So this is the total length minus length of with thought underscore symbol right so i am using a substitute function so this is my text put it comma here my old text is underscore and my new text is blank now close the bracket for substitute now close the bracket for line here now we have a product count next what we have to do next we have to get the product amount now go back to our sheet let's copy this entire formula which we have written here copy now go back to our raw data and paste here and once we paste let's replace this two reference here which is a2 remove this a2 next select this second product right this is my product so let's select this and if you remember manually we are adding a pipe symbol in the last right and in our raw data set we don't have pipe symbol in the last so what we will do here we'll add a pipe symbol here put the ampersand here double quote pipe symbol right so manually we are adding a pipe symbol to each of this product details next we have to replace this instance number right a11 remove this a11 then select this product code which we identified here right now press enter no need to make any other changes as we have only two references that we have changed here now press enter we will have a product amount for each instances 
right this is really awesome right you can make a use of this logic and you can make a use of this let function a lot this is a very powerful function we have in office 365 and also in office 2021 I hope this video give you very clear understanding how we can split text into multiple rows and how we can loop through text, how we can loop through the each instances in cell value. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching.